is Cruise Control. Control. Your on-air automotive magazine with co-hosts Fred Staub and Les Jackson. Control. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Control. Industry news. We'll fix or repair your car on the on air. The air. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin. Control. Because you're on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. And hello and welcome to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. It's also mine. My name is Les Jackson, and it's also Fred's. That's Fred Staub, the other voice, and head you're about to see. <laughs> head? And, well, entire upper body. I assume they're <laughs> attached. Uh, people have wondered that about me for many years. <laughs> Um, and uh, as usual, we have just a ton of automotive information uh, to, to convey today. And boy, you know, the bad news just keeps coming. It sure does, uh, Les. And that brings us to our first story we call Chipped Off. The chip woes continue with manufacturers eliminating safety features, new technology, and cutting production due to the shortage. I believe CNBC was saying that the um, numbers for GM are pretty grim, down 32.5% oh. on sales from this time last year. If they take away my heated steering wheel, I'm going to throw a fit. <laughs> anyway. Uh, BMW plans on keeping the internal combustion engine around for a while longer. Yep, yeah, we'll tell you about that and uh, what their plans are for doing that and how they will do that. Uh, also, Acura is re teasing the return of the Integra. Remember the Integra? They're bringing out a sedan, although they'll probably call it a coupe because it's a four-door with a fastback. But it's well, coming back, and we'll tell you about it, right? Yep, absolutely. I'm sure it'll look coopish. Uh, well, you know they will. And um, Mazda and Toyota, we mentioned that they have a joint uh, venture going. Their plant begins production. Yep, it begins production uh, with the uh, Toyota Corolla Cross. That's the first vehicle off the That's line. Right. And then Lambo is going to recreate a bit of its history, the first Countach. Yep, they built it, it yep. looked cool, and then they crash tested it. Now they're rebuilding <laughs> it exactly, and uh, probably wish they didn't crash test it originally. I bet. What do you think? Well, yeah. Uh, now, I don't notice the big wing on, uh, on this one. No, this one is a little bit more aerodynamically slick but very kuntashi in the front yeah for sure for sure so and uh catalytic converters and drugs uh apparently now they go together <laughs> we got to go on record i have never smoked a catalytic converter but weirdly less some people are believe it or not that is one of the stories <laughs> um, you know well, bad idea i would say and then, ah, nothing, <laughs> I'm nothing gonna surprise. Have an at the wheel <laughs> review of this vehicle. It is the Jeep Wrangler 4XE, the plug in hybrid version of the vehicle. We're going to check that out when we come back on Cruise Control, your on air automotive magazine. Stay tuned. We're just getting started.
Who's Control? Oh, boy. It continues. Chip woes. Welcome sure back. Sure does. To Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. We are glad you're along for the ride. Check us out at cruisecontrolradio.com or Facebook page or YouTube page. Get that automotive information and uh, just get knowledgeable because when you head into a dealership, it's a whole new game today. And uh, less, uh, it's all driven most of it's driven by the fact that they just can't build cars because they don't have the chips. We we're telling you sales yep. are off. Uh, of course, sales numbers are always a big thing in the first show of the month. And they are looking rather ugly. But uh, let's get to some of the chip stories. BMW is moving, removing some safety features because they just can't get the chips to to put them into the cars anymore. This is according to Germany's publication Beamer Today. They're losing their popular head-up display because they oh. just can't get the, the chips. It's being taken out of the European BMW 3 Series. Uh, and it's all, it will be available in the M cars, the M340i, m 340D and 330E, but it's no longer available on other trims. And it's kind of a trend we're seeing around the industry. Uh, this is super sad because Super, super Cruise, which is one of the best semi-autonomous driving systems out there, uh, was available in the Cadillac Escalade, no longer available for 2022. Oh. Uh, they are Stopping production of the three liter Duramax diesel due to part shortages. Uh, and vehicles like the Chevy Tahoe, GMC Yukon, and Cadillac Escalade will no longer be offering uh, the electronic steering column lock because of ongoing chip shortages. I would think most people wouldn't care much about that particular feature. But are these chips the same? Can you say, well, we won't do the lock, but, you know, that frees up enough chips to do whatever? Well, yeah, because they're they're all microprocessors. Yeah, you know, the, uh, the crappy thing, so though. So you, if you, you program it to, to do, do whatever you need. But, yeah. the but thing, it's not, you know, it's not just one chip. You're putting in a board which controls, let's say, the... the uh, um, the steering column lock, uh, there's a board with chips on it. There could be 50 chips or more on that board. Uh, so, you know, it's not just finding one chip for every vehicle. And the thing is, these vehicles now that they're selling with less features on them, they're going to be in the inventory for a while. And down mm -hmm. the line, when you go to buy them used, you'll be like, well, yeah, the Escalade at Super Cruise. I'm excited about that. And you'll get there and that model won't have it. Well, but I'll bet you that there are whole groups of engineers uh, at the factories who are, whose job it is right now uh, is to come up with uh, a an aftermarket uh, conversion. You mean to go down and For, take these to, vehicles? To, and yeah. Because it, you could sell this option later. Interesting. Say, okay, for another fifteen hundred bucks, we'll put this on your car that you couldn't get it when you bought it. Wow, wow. Well, it's also affecting Volkswagen. Um, Volkswagen had kind of weathered the storm, just like Toyota had been weathering the storm. But now, according to a German publication, Wolfsburger. Allegmine, uh, that th it's hitting the plant heavily now at Wolfsburg, which I think uh, will affect the Volkswagen Golf GTI. And of course, they mm. produce the Touran, the Tiguan, and some other models. Of course, the new GTI is coming out, something I want to get into. That might mean we don't get to see that for a while, doesn't it? Well, and this brings up another problem, which is if they keep producing fewer cars, guess what happens? The 
price of the existing cars keeps and used keeps going up. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It doesn't it, happen. It doesn't. Talk it about doesn't go inflation. Down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. GM has been hit hmm. terribly, terribly by um, the chip shortage, and it's it's cut into their Silverado production. They've had to stop and stop down for a couple of weeks at a time. And, uh, you know, Mary Barra was talking a little bit about it. Of course, the CEO of GM. And uh, she's saying this can't happen again. They are taking steps to cut out the middle person uh, mm -hmm. on chips and, and deal directly with chip manufacturers. But who knows when it will all end? 2023, some people are saying. Hey, when we come back, we're yep. going to tell you how BMW is keeping the internal combustion engine around. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. Fred Staub and Les Jackson with you, taking on a ride around the automotive industry as we do every week at this time. Uh, of course, you would have to have been living in a cave if you don't know the auto industry is moving towards electric power, electrification. Yep plug-in hybrids, hybrids, and full electric vehicles. By the way, I got to drive the ID4 for the first time this week. Have you driven it? I drove that last year. Yeah. I know. Uh, two years ago. Okay. No. Well, a year and a half. Before it was made, you drove it. You That's designed right. it, actually. <laughs> um, built, built it right here in the garage. Uh, pretty cool. Very, very responsive vehicle. 
it's a little Spartan looking inside, but it is yeah. uh, very quick off the line. Feels good. Good driving characteristics that I would say on my drive. I, I liked it. I think I think a lot of people will like it. I agree. I, I just hope they can make it. Yeah. Well, as we were talking earlier about the chip shortage, it's just it seems like it's never ending. Well, anyway, even though as the industry moves to electric power, BMW is saying they want to keep the gas engine around, the internal combustion engine, as long as they can. This is according to Automotive News Europe. They feel the world is still a long way off from pure electric vehicles being the chief mode of transport. According to... BMW development chief Frank Weber, there are still many o hurdles to overcome, but they still believe they can meet and exceed uh, the requirements of the Euro 7 regulations uh, to clean up gas engines even more. And the brand will be cutting down the number of ICE powertrains that produce by 50% in the coming years, but they won't phase them out entirely. Of course, BMW has invested a lot of money in hydrogen fuel cell technology as well. Uh, so they see it as a mix of different powertrains going forward. And some of those powertrains may be internal combustion engines. And let's face it, some may be actually powered by hydrogen, right? Uh, also, I think they're probably going to go larger scale on hybrids. Okay. Yeah, I... I I do think, at the very least, if you have an internal combustion engine, it will be electrified. It will be a plug-in hybrid. It will yep. be capable of moving itself with electric power because certain cities will require you to have a vehicle that has electric power. I remember driving a Peugeot years ago where the guy explained that to me where we can make it, force it into electric mode because he said this is coming where you know, certain areas will require you to be in electric mode. That's right. That's and then right. it may be done, as we've discussed previously, in geofencing, that it, you know, as you come into a town, it will sense where you are by GPS, and it will say, okay, I'm turning off your internal combustion engine, and uh, you're going to move around on electric power. Uh uh, it's certainly doable. Look at what the Corvette can do. It can raise the front end of the vehicle by GPS. So why couldn't you switch it over? Sure. Although you do need chips for that, Les. You do. <laughs> you do need chips. That's that's the key to that, right? Well, you do. Yeah. And uh, uh, boy, I wish I owned a chip plant. <laughs> uh, yeah, because you could have uh, you could have sales right away, but. Um, but we'll see what how this shakes out. Now, over at Acura, they are teasing us with something uh, called the Integra. Do you remember the Integra? I do. I like that's what it looked like. The Integra. Uh, that's a long ago Integra. <laughs> long ago Integra. Uh, it's interesting that they're bringing that back, and uh, it looks quite swoopy, doesn't it? It. Looks coopy, but you can see it's coopy, four door. Coopy and swoopy. <laughs> uh, um, but I, I will say, I like I like the shape. They they uh, launched the brand around the Integra in 1986, and the all new Acura Integra will be available. Uh, and during 2022, we don't know when it will be available, but. We don't really have that much information on other than this teaser photo. Um, and I'm sure they'll call it a coupe, even though it's got four doors and the original had four they doors. They will. They will. But very uh, Aston Martin-ish. Yeah, it is. A very smooth, smooth body. So there you have it. Um, also this week, Mazda and Toyota opened their plant. And it's interesting plant. Uh, it's going to start the joint venture. It started with the production of the Corolla Cross, which I think is going to be a big hit for Toyota. It's a new factory in Alabama. 
uh, and the Toyota Corolla Cross is the first vehicle that was off the assembly line. Uh, it's not they're, it's, they're not sure what Mazda is going to produce there yet, but uh, over 2,000 employees are already hired, and they're adding 1,700 more to the existing workforce. So it'll be a total of 4,000 jobs. That's pretty good news for that economy, isn't it? It's very good news. Um, we don't know the name of the Mazda model. Yeah, I don't. They haven't announced it yet. But I I'm going to call it the Mazoda. Mazoda. <laughs> okay. And uh, they plan to build three hundred thousand a year uh, total. Of course, that's you thousand need, a day. You need chips for that. <laughs> now there you go, introducing difficulty. You know, I could just start a rumor that. In order to reduce chip usage, they're going to go back to carburetors. What do you think? <laughs> Don't start that rumor. <laughs> they're going back to carburetors. Uh, they're going back to manual uh, cable-operated HVAC. Why? Why aren't they asking people that have you know older computers? Instead of throwing them away, send them to such and such, and they can start pulling chips off of the boards. I don't know. Think of that warranty issue, though. Hey, this came from my uh, <laughs> 1995 <laughs> computer that I've run 24 right. hours a day with dust inside of it. That's right. Nothing nothing could go wrong there. So, anyway, good news at the Mazda plant. That's, that's great. Now, over at Lamborghini... <laughs> How often do we get to say that on the show? Now, over at Lamborghini. Oh, never. Countach. The Countach 500. LP 500. This was the prototype for for the Countach, which became a huge car in the 80s, right? Huge. Uh, late 80s, early 90s. The, uh, it was presented. sexy car. At, uh, originally presented in 1971, March 1971, uh, as the LP500, and it became the star of the show at the Geneva Motor Show. Hmm. Remember when we used to have those car shows? Uh, March of Vaguely. 1971. Uh, and they decided uh, it was replacing the, uh, how do you say that? Miura, right? The Miura, which was the most famous lamborghini um i had i had matchbox models of that i love that yeah that was the mirror was uh had a top speed of 175 which back then was really fast well the countach replaced that uh and they showed this off at geneva and when they decided to go into production they decided well we need to crash test it so they crash tested this original model of it, which I bet they wish they didn't do because now they're reconstructing it uh, to make it just like the original. And they're going to painstaking uh, way methods to make it accurate. They even had the tires recreated by Pirelli. But I don't think they're going to crash test this one. That's just my thought on no. that but uh that little bit of automotive history revised by lamborghini when we come back we're going to talk about catalytic converters and drugs it's happening stay tuned hmm. to cruise control
Cruise Control. Welcome back to Cruise Control. We are uh, moving right along. I'm Les, he's Fred, and we told you that people are using catalytic converters <laughs> in the truck business, and it's absolutely true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, something Just... else I never thought I'd say on Cruise Control. This story comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, people are actually creating this stuff called bomb. What they do is they crush the ceramic honeycomb core of a used catalytic converter. Think of all the stuff that's in there, Les. Well, it removes uh, nitrous oxide, nitrogen, from the exhaust so you're going to have particulates you're going to have the platinum uh, catalyst and you're going to have solidified nitrogen nitrous oxide yep they crush it up well, and that they, ain't good and i believe they smoke it or take it as pills yeah someone there said we used to drink very strong whiskey now we drink we use bomb because it makes you uh, calm. Apparently, or, they go or. into catatonic states by taking this. Uh, and it's a real problem there. Uh, so people are not stealing catalytic converters for uh, the metals to throw them in a salvage yard. They're stealing them to smoke them. But then also... Hmm. I love to find stories that relate to each other. There's a Missouri, Missouri man was on Facebook Marketplace. He was selling a catalytic converter, probably stolen, uh, right in the box. And uh, he posted a photo of the box. And in the back of the photo was a big <laughs> stash of methamphetamine and a syringe. Uh, when the police saw this, they said, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll buy that catalytic converter. They came over and they arrested him. That's smart, isn't it? <sighs> I'll tell you, some criminals are smarter than others. Yeah. Uh, this He was taken into custody, this guy named James Kurtz, 38, because he had a visible bag of meth and drug paraphernalia on the coffee table. He has to learn how to crop those photos, you know? <laughs> yep. You gotta, you just gotta watch. Yeah. So that would definitely be part of uh, Jay Leno's Dumb Criminals. Remember mm -hmm. when he used to do that on The Tonight Show? Dumb those Criminals. Are great. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I would say, uh, I would say that guy has definitely got some problem. Hey, let's talk about the Ford Mustang Mach-E. It's getting a yeah. upgrade for 2022. Extended range, not huge extended, but the standard battery is now 70 kilowatt hours, while the extended range is 91 kilowatt hours. That's up from 68 kilowatt hours and 88 kilowatt hours. You get a few more miles. The standard, the SR, I should say, all-wheel drive model will jump from 211 miles to 217 miles. The rear rear wheel drive rear wheel drive model goes from 230 to 237 miles, and the extended range goes up to 279 miles, nine more than the old model. So not huge increases, but I tell you what, if you're marketing these models against others, it makes them uh, competitive. Yeah, so. It does. It's not bad. I mean, you never know. You might need seven more miles to get to a charger, right? That's, that's exactly right. Yeah, so kind of a interesting news. Uh, I would wait for 2022 if you can buy them because, hey, more range is a good thing. Uh, another thing, kind of a – this is an offshoot of the chip shortage. Um, you know, we talked about a lot of different vehicles that – we're interested in uh, on cruise control and many of them ha are just coming out now, including the 2021 Ford escape plug-in hybrid vehicle and the Lincoln grand Corsair. They finally made it to showrooms, Les Jackson, the escape plug-in hybrid um, 
only is is front wheel drive only the Lincoln Corsair, the Lincoln Grand Corsair is all wheel drive with electric motors in the back. But a lot of these things that we've talked about premiering have been delayed due to chip shortages. And it's good to see this finally coming out um, and being available. And a lot more plug in hybrid uh, vehicles coming on board and crossovers, including uh, Hyundai's Tucson, the 2022 Hyundai Tucson plug in hybrid electric vehicle. That's starting at 35,975. But when you do the math, as Autoblog did, uh, it actually, when you get when you get the rebate for it, it actually is cheaper than the hybrid version of the Tucson uh, vehicle. And that's kind of nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good because it gets it, it has a 1.6 liter turbocharged four. Uh, the total horsepower is 261. And you get an EPA estimated 33 miles of all electric driving. So that's certainly one to check out, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Good good bargain. Yeah. Uh, do you think that the fact that going back to the Escape plug-in hybrid, the fact that it doesn't have all-wheel drive is definitely a negative, I would say. In the Northeast, yes. Yeah, in the Northeast for sure. Uh, and people would opt for the Lincoln that has that uh and that's not that's i have not been in the corsair uh which is their smallest crossover but i would definitely like to try that out i'm going to ask about that when that's available to do an at the wheel review uh speaking of at the wheel reviews these are light at the wheel reviews as i told you before we're at the input test days got to drive some vehicles that are fresh out including the uh, nissan frontier which i really liked it, you know how the Frontier just had a personality, the old one? Yeah, this always did. This one still has that personality. This is the Pro 4X model. And uh, in that kind of desert tan look, little military look. As you can see, it was a rainy day that day. Look at the puddles around there. Uh, great vehicle, though. A lot of fun to drive. Capable and real basic interior, which I liked a lot. And then the other vehicle I got to drive uh, is the Nissan Pathfinder. One of the nicest riding uh, crossovers out there, sporting that two-tone paint job. Yep. Uh, really nice. A good vehicle for a trip. Uh, I was telling our PR friends that there's something about the Pathfinder, whatever they did, however they engineered it, it rides really well and, and is a good long trip version of that uh and then we got to drive this big jeep it's a hundred thousand uh, dollar jeep and it is the uh grand wagoneer one of the biggest jeeps ever made look at the size of that mm. that's a big vehicle also sporting that's the two-tone yeah uh so uh that is even bigger than the grand cherokee l and this is a hundred thousand dollar jeep Probably one of the most expensive Jeeps out there. Just some of the vehicles I got to drive at the Impa Teste, which was a lot of fun. Even though it was raining, it was good to see people uh, and get out there and try out some new stuff. And um, also drove the ID4, which we were talking about a little bit before. ID4, of course, the VW um, crossover uh, that is all electric. So. Uh, good and, stuff. Uh, maybe maybe next week we'll cover some more of those, and I'll be driving this week at uh, the annual WAPA rally. Oh yeah, Automotive Press, and I'll drive a dozen or so new somethings. Take some snaps, and uh, we'll put them up on cruise we'll take control. Take lots of snaps. Yep. Yeah, we'll, we'll we can check them out on our Facebook page. You can check them out uh, on the show. So. Good stuff. And don't forget to go over to our Facebook page, uh, Cruise Control Radio, and uh, and check out some of the things that are going on there. Uh, we didn't get to this the first hour, but I, I, I want to throw it in that there is a new study that, that most people think. It, it's funny. The article 
talk about this study. I, I think they talked to about a thousand people said all Americans think <laughs> I guess mm -hmm. all Americans <laughs> means uh, uh, a thousand people. But a lot of Americans think it will take 15 years for electric cars to become the dominant powertrain um, that it won't happen before then. What do you think? I think they're overestimating uh, the time. I, I, I still, I've been saying for quite a while, it's going to be 2030. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. And many manufacturers are switching well before that. But yep. <laughs> will the chip shortage ever stop? And will they be able to build these vehicles? I don't know. When we come back, we're going to look at another vehicle. The Jeep 4XE at the wheel review. So stay tuned.
Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control. We are really glad you're with us. We love it because we get to drive a lot of vehicles, but we don't keep them to ourselves, Les Jackson. We tell everyone about them. And in the case uh, of this week, we're talking about the Jeep 4XE. It's a plug-in hybrid, the first plug-in hybrid that Jeep came out with. This week, they announced others, uh, including the Grand Cherokee. But this is the first one. This is the one you can buy right now. Mm Mm-hmm. And it is uh, it is quite the vehicle. I have to say, Les, I enjoyed it tremendously. Ours uh, was uh, red with black wheels. Firecracker red, by the way. And uh, Nice name. You can't go wrong with that. They actually put the battery for the vehicle under the rear seat. There's some warnings there. <laughs> Do not set the battery on fire. <laughs> you know. Do not poke with a nail. Yeah, did not poke with a nail, stuff like that. But it is a plug-in hybrid vehicle, so it's got a two-liter, four-cylinder engine. And then, of course, it has got the battery pack. And normally it is a, uh, it can go about 20 miles on electric, all electric. This is the test vehicle we had with Firecracker Red, black wheels, soft top, 4XE. You plug it in. If you plug it in and charge it up, you get about 20 miles of electric range. Then once that expires, it becomes like a regular hybrid. And it has all the Jeep goodness, including trail-ready, a trail-ready vehicle. You can even get a two-inch lift kit from the folks at Mopar, Hmm. which is a first for this vehicle. And it's available in a bunch of different trims, including the one we had, the Sahara, and even the Rubicon. So you can get this uh, pretty well across the board. You plug it in right there on the cowl, and uh, it's every bit a Jeep. And the great thing about it is you have three different electric modes um, that do, uh, they favor different different, uh, elements of the vehicle. By the way, you can see it can still do the water fording, it can still do all kinds of things like that. On the inside, uh, it was fully equipped. Our model was fully equipped. Leather seats, heated steering wheel, heated seats, uh, all the goodies that you were used to and in a Jeep. You, you did not say, oh, well, this is the plug-in hybrid and I don't get uh, things like nav or, or uh, you know, the other accoutrement that you're used to. Uh, heated seats, heated heated steering wheel, all there. Um, but uh, it also had a couple of different modes. So there was a mode uh, that would save the battery for later, which is uh, interesting. There's a hybrid mode, electric mode, and e-save. E-save saves that battery for later, uh, or you could force it into hybrid mode or force it into electric mode. Uh, we got over 30 miles to the gallon with this thing on the highway. We took it on the highway, and it was great. Now, this one had a soft top. It did not have the headliner option, so it was a little bit loud on the inside. You could hear trucks and that next to you. Rear seat passengers, not a lot of leg room in this vehicle, but you did get uh, some USB connectivity, USB-C and regular USB, and uh, AC. There's an AC inverter. Battery under under the rear seat, as I said, so it's stowed. You don't lose uh, a lot of storage capability. Um, but uh, overall, I was very pleased with this vehicle. It rode like a Jeep, uh, but we are used to that, and that's part of the uh, the appeal of the vehicle. Uh, you know, the fact that you can get this even on the Rubicon is pretty exciting. It really is. That how, how deep a water can it go in? 30 inches. Wow. 30 inches, yeah. That's regular Jeep. It is a regular Jeep. There's no there's no restrictions on it, basically. A total powertrain output is pretty impressive. 375 horsepower, 470 mm. pound-feet of torque in a Jeep. That is, that's pretty stout, wouldn't you say? It's a lot. Yeah. Uh, of course... This Jeep can be had with multiple different powertrains. You can get this 4XE version. You can get 
the uh, 392 V8. You can get the V6 Pentastar. You can get the four-cylinder. You can get a diesel. So there are a lot of choices there. But I have to say, this is pretty appealing, this model, because you do get to run for 20 miles um, all electric, which is great. It really was great going through town that way. Uh, and the transition was smooth. We were on the highway, and we took it, uh, took it to the point where the electric expended, and it, it, it completely smoothly uh, converted over uh, to, to um, hybrid mode without, an, without a glitch. Very smooth. Uh, you think about this, it's only 121 cubic inch engine. Um, but, uh, I found it to have plenty of power. I really did. I thought, I thought it was a, a great, uh, two liter turbo engine, smooth transitions, uh, in from the hybrid mode, um, start stop was very smooth. Uh, and all the, the creature features on the inside that, that was great. What would I opt for? Well, I probably would, uh, would go for the hard top. It's just easier to use uh, when you're putting groceries in. Basically, to get that rear flap up, you just have to tug down on it and, and then reassemble it. Uh, I like the hardtop a lot mm -hmm. better. That's that's what I would go. It's quieter. But uh, I think it this 4XE um, powertrain is exciting, and it, it really works well with the Jeep. Now, let's uh, talk a little bit about pricing. Jeep Wranglers are not cheap. As tested with a few Mopar accessories, 56690 And you know the thing about Jeep Wranglers is they hold their value. So even if it's a few years old, it's going to hold its value. I love the Firecracker Red. I love the um, black wheels, and I thought that that was a great look here. Um, and I love the 4XE drivetrain. Uh, I, I have to say, whenever I get a Wrangler, I'm always pretty happy about it because it is it is an exciting vehicle, and a lot of people like it. A lot of neighbors said, we like the Jeep, and then they didn't even know it was a 4XE plug-in hybrid. I had to explain that concept to them, but uh, really nice, nice vehicle. Uh Probably I might get the Rubicon model. I like the Rubicon's capability. I like the fact that the Rubicon comes with a metal front bumper. Um, but uh, all around, 4XE Jeep is uh, hitting it out of the park. I look forward to driving the Jan Grand Cherokee with the 4XE drivetrain, seeing, seeing how that would go. Would you get the four-door Jeep or the, the standard two-door? I'd get the four-door. Yeah, more capability, easier, easier to uh, to get get in and out. I yeah, I probably get the four door with the uh, with the the hard top, and you still get some good storage in the back. Problem is though, on the soft top, you do have to kind of manually pull that that top apart to get there. I always like that back plate too. It's a built in Toledo, Ohio, Ohio, that they put on the tailgate. Um, there you have it though, at the wheel review of the Jeep 4XE Wrangler Sahara Unlimited. Unlimited is the uh, the name for the four door version. Um, Jeep is doing good things. They're they're really really selling, and I think you're going to see that uh, plug in hybrid capability <clears throat> yep. across the board. Certainly, some of their smaller vehicles like the Compass, it would lend itself to that easily and if it lends itself to the Wrangler and the Grand Cherokee but uh, across the board that's going to be available. We hope you like that at the True. wheel review of the 2021 Jeep Wrangler 4XE we're going to keep them coming, plenty more to talk about. Also don't forget to check us out at cruisecontrolradio.com link over to all our social media and more. Time for me to say I'm Fred Stubb I'm Les Jackson. We're going to see you down the road. Bye. All righty.